changes are and this is the so called genre transformation and the idea in essence is the following. If I give you a simple function of x, a single variable x, then there are two ways of looking at this function. One of them is to say that for every value of x, I assign a value of f of x and therefore, if I assign this set of numbers corresponding to each value of x, if I specify the numerical values of f of x for each x, I have specified the function. Okay. There is another way of doing it and that is to say, I assign at each point the value of the slope of the function and at the next point I assign the slope once again and the slope once again and so on and in this manner I can build up the function if I specify at each point f prime of x at each point provided of course, I also specify f of x at some reference point. Otherwise of course, you could shift this entire graph parallel to itself and it would be exactly the same as before if I just gave you the slope, but if I also tell you f of 0 for instance, then you know where the intercept is and after that you can reconstruct the function. This is the idea behind the Legendre transform except that it is not very useful in one variable, but when you have more than one variable it becomes exceedingly use useful. So, let me give you an example. Suppose you have a function f of x comma y and then of course, you know that you can write its differential df as delta f over delta x dx plus delta f over delta y dy and this quantity delta f over delta x is some function of x and y. So, let me call this capital X of little x, little x let me use a curly x, so let us use little x in this fashion. So, you can distinguish between these two quantities. and capital Y of x, y, e y by definition capital X and capital Y are these partial derivatives. Okay. And now I might want to say that instead of looking at little x and little y as the independent variables, I look at capital X and little y as the independent variables. In other words the slope with respect to x. If I want to do that and I want to construct a function g such that dg is equal to something times d capital X plus something else times d little y in recognition of the fact that this quantity, this function g is a function of capital X and little y. The trick is very simple. All I have to do is to subtract from f minus little x times capital X. And then of course, if I take d f, I define g as equal to this d g is d f minus x capital D x minus capital X times little d x and of course, that term cancels out and you are left with d g to be a function of d x and d y combination of d x and d y. Okay. So, this is the idea behind the Legendre transform. Invariably you have to subtract out. So, let us write down what d g is d g equal to d f minus x d x minus x d x and that is equal to minus x d x plus y d y because this term cancels out on both sides. Okay. But you must remember that this little x must be now re-expressed in terms of capital X and little y. So, you need to take this equation x of x comma y equal to delta f over delta x and you have to solve this equation for little x and express little x as a function of capital X and little y. Now, once you do that then you are guaranteed that g equal to g of capital X and little y. Okay. You could go on and say can I define a function h which is a function of little x and capital Y and then of course, you can do that by defining h is equal to f minus y times y is equal to h of little x and capital Y. 
to make one more Legendre transform. And finally, you could transform to capital X and capital Y altogether. So, you could define a function uh, say P equal to P of capital X capital Y. This would be F minus X X minus Y. You can generalize this to any number of vari independent variables x, y, z, etcetera. So, the whole idea is simply to see what is the most convenient function for your purpose. Very often these f's and g's and so on would be some kind of potentials or some kind of function like the, Lega, uh, uh, like the Laplace, uh, like the uh, Lagrangian which I would like to transform to a different set of independent variables for some reason or the other. You are already familiar with this in another context. What is that? Pardon me? The Gibbs potential in thermodynamics you are used to this thing because if you recall we are going to do thermodynamics, but let me recall to you what happens. You start with the internal energy U and this internal energy you transform and what is this a function of? What is du a function of? Well du is T d s minus P d v for a fixed number of particles. So, therefore, u is a function of s and v. So, this in general du the first law of thermodynamics can be written T d s minus P d v. Actually if you change the number of particles you also have a chemical potential times the differential in the number of particles. So, this of course implies that u is a function of s, v and n as the independent variables. And it is obvious from this that T is delta U over delta S keeping V and N constant. They are the partial derivatives. Then you might want to consider a function DF which is equal to D of U minus T S and that will now become a function of T V and N because DF the T D S part is going to cancel from here. There is going to be a T D S and an S D T. So, it becomes T f is equal to minus S d t minus P d v plus mu d n. This implies of course that f is a function of T v and n. So, what you have done is a Legendre transform going from the internal energy u to the Helmholtz energy f because you would like to have as control variables the temperature volume and number rather than the entropy volume and number depending on your conditions. You might further want to change from P d v to V d p because you might be able to control temperature pressure and number. Then what do you do? You go from this f by subtracting f minus P v plus P v because there is already a minus sign here. And what would this give you? Tg here, and that is equal to minus S d t plus V d p plus mu d n, and that implies that G is a function of T p and n because Dg is proportional to a combination of d t, d p, and d n. So, depending on what your external conditions are, what your experimental conditions are, if you can handle temperature, pressure and the number as your control variables, then you would like to have the Gibbs free energy as your thermodynamic potential. These are all thermodynamic potentials and you go from one to the other depending on your convenience, depending on the kind of processes you want to look at and then of course, you know in thermal equilibrium, in a state of thermal equilibrium, if you are at constant entropy volume and number then the internal energy is at a minimum. If you are in a stage where the temperature volume and number are constant then in thermal equilibrium the Helmholtz free energy is at a minimum and similarly for the Gibbs free energy. So, this is the reason for going from one thermodynamic to potential to another simply so that you can handle you can first write a minimum principle and secondly you can decide on what your experimental control variables are. 